Now let's get to the program. Let me first welcome Derek Briggs with Briggs Lawn Care. Uh, put your hands together for Derek. It's all yours, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I want to first thank everybody for taking time out of their morning for being here and listening to the two presentations. Uh, it really means a lot to us. Uh, I'm just going to start off by kind of explaining how I thought I should start it to how I actually did. Uh, so I went to college. I took business classes. All the business classes tell you, okay, get a business plan, uh, put it on paper. If it's on paper and it looks good and you present it to the bank, you get this money, and it should be bulletproof. Well, my cousin, she is uh, kind of the same system as Kelly here, uh, but she's in the Kansas City area. So I called her and I was telling her, okay, I want to start this business. I want to do something. And the first question she asked is, uh, is there enough room in Sedalia for a company in your industry? Uh, are you needed? And I kind of thought, I was like, that's a stupid question. And, She's, if you know her, she doesn't ask stupid questions. And so I was like, well, yeah, I've got tons of businesses that do lawn care here. Uh, surely they need one more. And that was just kind of my take on it. That was how I thought businesses should be started. And uh, she kept asking that same question. And uh, finally, she just like, read this book and call me and we'll come back to answering your questions. She gave me this book. It's called The All In Startup by Diane Kander. And I read it and I couldn't put it down because it changed everything of how I thought I needed to start a business plan. Because I had business plan, you know, wrote up, I was working on it, I thought I was doing good, I was getting my input cost, trying to figure out how much uh, output I'm gonna need and uh, just getting all this. And by the time after I read that book, I just pitched it. I just, all everything I did, I just threw it away. Uh, what this book kind of showed me is uh, is there a problem in this industry that I could go forth and fix or find something that sets me apart from other companies? Because if you're from the Sedalia area, there are tons and tons of lawn care companies and they all pretty much do the same thing. There's some that are bigger, some that are smaller, just kind of starting and doing the same thing they did because it worked. Uh, so I set out to try to see if there's a problem in this industry that I needed to fix. And the way I did that was I just went door to door I knocked on doors, I asked questions from all over, from kind of the higher end areas to some of the lower end that I could see that they're getting lawn care uh, professional help for their lawn. And what I found out was there are some people that they just, they love their care, they got the professional, uh, they had professional service, uh, they like their prices. Uh, and then I was asking dislikes, what do you not like about it? And a lot of it was the invoicing. Uh, inconsistent invoicing uh, and that's on the company's fault that's their fault for not doing the invoicing that's something I can control when they get their invoice when they can pay uh, and then the other thing was uh, you know mowing's a need you need to mow your yard either every week every other week uh, the want is your fertilized uh, seeding aerate things like that you don't need it but it's wanted because it makes your yard just stand out better than your neighbor's yard. And that's a lot of it. You just want a better yard than your neighbor. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's almost like a little competition. Uh, and so a lot of them didn't want to pay that because they provide the service and then you get charged for that service. And so you could have a $50 weekly mow. So you got $200 by the end of the month that you know you have to pay. And then if they come in there and they have a $300 seed because they did it at the beginning of the month and then they fertilize at the end and that's another hundred dollars right there you got another extra four hundred dollars on top of the 200 you paid to mow a lot of people don't want to see an 800 dollars invoice come through that they have to pay right then and there so what i did is i take the entire years what i would do for the entire year mow fertilize seed everything like that and i compile it into one price and then i split that price into eight payments you can pay monthly, bi-weekly, or weekly. If you pay weekly or monthly, I've got credit card uh, system set up where you, you don't even have to worry about it, it's auto pay. Like, and that way you know what you're paying each time I charge or I send you an invoice. Uh, and what's good about this is there's gonna be weeks, this is Missouri weather. We had three seasons yesterday. Uh, 
so there's going to be a week where it probably will rain all week and I won't get to your yard. And so I just, I'll take that mowing cost off. So your bill will never be higher than what I say it will be at the beginning of the year. It'll always be that price or lower. Unless you add something on later, that would be the only time that you'd see a kind of a spike in your invoicing. And that's kind of the almost migraine problem that I found with this industry is just that upfront seeding, fertilizer, aerate, dethatch, all that cost was just, it's too high for some people. And even people in the nicer areas that can afford it don't want to see that high bill or high invoice come through. And so that's kind of where I, I uh, kind of chosen to follow. Uh, that was kind of my spiel. Any questions? Yes. Um, so do you have people on staff? So right now it's just me uh, because I'm cheap labor. So. <laughs> Uh, eventually, yes, I would like to have uh, staff and all that. Uh, that's kind of later on down the road. We'll see how this takes off right now. Uh, most of the presenters that I've came and listened to, they've been operating for a year or so or more. I'm operating these last few months. So I'm just, I'm a baby at this. Mm -hmm. how you got yep. the understanding of what the needs are of, of the people and, and the ability to separate yourself from, from the rest of the pack. Um, the technology, it sounds like, is kind of where you're, you're getting your niche from. Kind of talking about the learning curve on, on some of that. So technology as far as mowing or... Kind of, like the, the invoicing. The so it bugs me whenever people say that oh, my invoice was inconsistent or inaccurate. To me, that's a vital part of your business. Like you've got to be accurate there to keep people happy because nobody wants to fight with you over a price. Uh, so what I did is I bank with US and so they have a credit card system that they explained. I've looked at a few credit card systems and this was just simple for me. Uh, I didn't have a middle or third party involved. Uh, it's just, it's it's safe to use so if somebody calls and i enter their number in uh it's encrypted i don't know what it is it gets a new number every time i send it uh it's just that's something i'm kind of working on and then even my quickbooks i didn't do the quickbooks desktop program where you go out and it's on your desktop i am using uh their kind of online their cloud-based system mainly because i have an older computer and i'm afraid that it's going to crash and i'm going to lose everything and so this way it stores it and I don't have to worry about losing customers like information or payments or what I've done. Is that it? What made you decide to choose this industry? Uh, so my background is agriculture. Uh, went to Missouri State for animal science. I did agronomy and should have paid attention in business class a little bit more now that I think about it. Uh, so I've always been I like being outside. I don't like being stuck inside. I don't like those jobs. Uh, but paperwork, I like some, for some reason, but I don't like it all the time. So if I can be outside mowing all day and then I come inside and my desk is at my house and so I can play with my kid and do paperwork and then when he goes to sleep, I can finish it. Uh, I like being up at night anyways. I really don't like getting up early. Uh, but that kind of answer. Oh, go ahead. What? This just lawn care? Or? So, because I live in this area, I live in Lincoln. Uh, Kansas City probably would have had more more potential, uh, but my wife teaches over at Smithton, so it's just easy to stay in this area. Uh, and I travel Sedalia, Lincoln, and Warsaw is kind of I travel sixty five. Uh, to go do everything. So how about your equipment for the, you know, for the business? And so I did wind up doing a business plan to get a micro loan. Uh, I wound up getting, because I will kind of, I don't want to work on my equipment. I want to make sure that it starts every time I turn that key. 
So I went brand new on the equipment. So then that way it's got a warranty. If I have any problems, I go directly to Gravely or Auden here in town. Uh, but I run a Gravely 260, 60 inch cut. I kind of do, I got a lot of commercial stuff right now. People in the residential area aren't thinking about it. They were last week and then it snowed. So, <laughs> so, uh, uh, so just kind of doing some bigger yards right now. Uh, eventually I'd like to do some smaller subdivision yards. What, what kind of uh, advertising marketing are you doing? Uh, so I'm on Facebook uh, for, and I know some companies, they have a Twitter account, but it's, that's hitting, Twitter's kind of younger generation than me. And so they're not the ones that have the houses, own the houses or have property, some do. Uh, but Facebook is kind of my age and up, everybody's kind of got a Facebook page. And so I market on Facebook and then I also have this website here. Uh, it's simple rigs lawn care LLC.com. Uh, it was easy to make. And that's kind of what I've been doing. And then I've also been going around knocking on doors, handing out flyers, uh, putting stuff in mailboxes, things like that. Yeah, go ahead. Other than, uh, other than uh, uh, lawn work, what, what other expenses do you? So you got the trailer, and I have access to a lot of trucks. I have a lot, of, so pretty much my sister's boyfriend has a truck, and so I rent his truck for right now until I can get enough enough income that I can go out and get my own truck. Uh, it kind of helps me save money and kind of not have a bigger loan to pay back than I really want. So. You mentioned a, uh, a book that really helped you out. What was the name of that book? Uh, All In Startup. All In Startup. Yep. All In Startup by Diane Kander, or Diana Kander. But that book pretty much tells you go find a migraine problem because who here has had a headache? Right, everybody's probably had a headache. You probably don't need any relief from it. You can usually power through, but if you've ever had a migraine, you need something to fix that. You need uh, a painkiller or something. And that's kind of what that book kind of related to. Find that migraine problem and try to find a solution for it. And that's why I kind of want to bundle my services, bundle my cost, and then split it up over a uh, eight month period. And because if you would rather pay there's some people that they'll pay $800 right up front, or if you can tell them, you pay $100 for eight months. Most people do the $100 for eight months. Uh, and that's kind of my philosophy on that, because it's working for cell phones. Everybody goes in, bundles their cell phone package, and splits it up. So how do you protect yourself when you split it somebody's middle up for eight months, and then they stop paying for your services in part? So, uh, my services, I they have either the 1st or 15th to pay. Uh, my invoice will show up a week before that, so they have plenty of time to pay by that date. Uh, and then they have, the traditional is, you bill them every month and they have 30 days past that. And so that could be eight weeks of mowing for free. So I shorten that, I, you got seven days to pay me. If I don't get it by that seventh day, I just stop. Uh, I'll stop mowing, I'll give you some notices, I'll give you a final notice. And, and by the end of that quarter, I'll send you to collection. And you have a signed document that states that is my order and that is how I work. So you do sign a contract with them? Uh, yes, there's some people, there's some, and I found this with more older people, they still like the handshake. And so I'm a believer in that, so I will shake your hand, but if I don't get my payment, I will stop. Because that is that's, hard. That's hard to do. I mean, yes. it really is. So that face to face and really ask some detailed questions to get the information that you need. That's that's amazing. Number one. Um, number two, I want to know a little bit more about how many customers you have and how that's going to be for you to actually work on that <clears throat> that invoicing. Or if you think probably down the line you're going to have got somebody who's monitoring that a little bit more for you. Uh. Again, I'd like to stay by myself and for a while, and uh, because again, invoicing falls on me, not somebody else doing it. Uh, right now, I don't have as many customers and clients that I would like, but again, this is this is right now is a time when 
people are actually thinking about it. Uh, I've gotten a lot more businesses because businesses have been thinking about this, just trying to sign a contract and not have to worry about it when this time rolls around. Uh, so I've got more commercial stuff than I do residential right now. Um, uh, what was part of your other question? Well, so. I'm just wondering you know, if you really start to get busy. Um, I don't know how many customers you have now, but if you're working that area, I'm, I'm sure mm -hmm. you're going to increase your number of businesses and residential. Yep. So my, my thought is how do you work that with um, trying to make sure that you're invoicing everybody properly? And how that so work? just time management? Is it going to get overwhelming? I guess, oh, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it has for everybody. Uh, I'm kind of prepared. And like I said, I, I'm a night owl. I like staying up. I can stay up till three, four in the morning. I just, I, and eight o'clock, I'm usually up anyways. Uh, I can get up earlier. Uh, there's some nights that I have worked and I haven't slept for 36 hours, 40 hours. It's just, when this is on your mind and you can't shut it off, it's hard to sleep. And you're always trying to figure out something. Uh, I'm always talking to people. Uh, there's people that have a lot of resources but don't know how to use it and i'm trying to be resourceful i guess if that makes sense uh, so i've been talking to like uh, mizzou extensions for the agronomists to see kind of what's the best fertilizer program seed program uh, because i know some companies they they'll do something and they don't know why they're doing it and i want to be able to if somebody asks i can tell you why uh, that bugs me whenever that well i just do this it'll work i don't like that answer so, last, last question. Uh, what is we? Uh, what can we as a community do? Uh, go to Facebook, like, share my page. Uh, it's easy. Riggs Lawn Care LLC. It's on uh, the card. Uh, if you go to my website, you can click on. It. Anyways, you can go to my website, and if you see the Facebook, uh, the Facebook logo right there, and that's locked. Anyways, there's a Facebook icon. If you click on it, it'll take you directly to my Facebook account. Uh, if you know anybody that needs their yard mode this summer, give them my card. Or if you knew, call it, give me a call. Thanks, Derek. Yep. Thank you.